Hello, everybody. This is Tony Ruggiero, and you're listening to the Tour Coach Podcast, and I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, whether you're driving to the golf course, driving to work, or you're sitting on an airplane and plugging in the Tour Coach Podcast. If you've been listening to us, you know, but if you haven't, these are the a collection of my conversations with players, teachers I know and respect are doing great things, fitness experts, mental coaches, performance experts, all people that I hang out with, teach with, coach, and spend time with on my travels, whether it's from Mobile, Alabama, in my studio, down to the golf studio at Old Palm and the great members and the great staff that we have there where I coach and teach most of the time, or whether it's up at Bluebell in Philadelphia where I spend a little bit of time during the summer, or it's on the road at a live event or a Corn Ferry or a PGA Tour event. These are all authentic, real conversations. Really don't edit them down. You hear us exactly as we are, whether we're having fun laughing, whether we're talking about something serious, or we're just giving you our straight-up opinion on what we think about things in the world of golf. You're in the right place if you want to get better and you want to have some fun. You're listening to the tour coach. And, hey, if you like what you hear, there's lots of other content out there. We've really made an effort over the last – the last year in particular to get more content out there for you as this stuff has grown beyond my belief. So you can follow us on Instagram at the do sweeper, or just check out our YouTube page. Just type in Tony and the do sweepers and we put stuff up. We try to get it up most daily, which are scenes and selections of stuff going on in our daily teaching with one-on-one with individuals. You'll find tons of help, tons of information and tons of things that could help all of you play better golf and before we dive into the tour coach i couldn't do it without our great sponsors i tell you all the time been so fortunate to have great sponsors and loyal people that we've been in business with and done stuff with for such a long time obviously shrikson and cleveland golf and all of the folks there whether it's rodney mason noel eddie or chip they're the very best you can't forget buick gmc in particular mitch mcconnell and the folks there at mcconnell automotive you got vineyard vines amber and ian and all the folks and bushnell golf all of their support makes the tour coach and everywhere we go and everything we do for you possible so check out all our content enjoy listening to this episode of the tour coach and hopefully i'll see you on the tee somewhere soon all right, so another one of our world famous round tables here near a hot tub, but we're not in it. <laughs> and we had to have it. Anyways, at the Airbnb here for the uh, retreat in February. And this is one of the best houses we've ever had, people wise. Jackson, Morgan Hale, our boy Coop. So good to have Coop. And first time here at a retreat, and maybe ever. Have, has he been before? Luke got podcast. He's done podcasts yeah. plenty at golf camp. First time down here. First time. Luke got three LG 2.0. Man, we, outstanding today. we had a blast. Outstanding. We had a blast. So, anyways, Jackson, let's start us off with your observations. Go ahead. From today? Yeah, let's uh, tell you what you think. Yeah, and great. welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me, Tony. And, and congratulations on you. People that are listening to this may not know, but starting this week, there's going to be two extra. Tour Coach podcast during the week, the little 10 minute little minis, and there'll be combinations of. Called potties. Well, I call them potties. Full of knowledge. Absolutely. <laughs> Full of knowledge. Right. Little minis that Jackson and myself will rotate and alternate. And I know you taped one today. So, anyways, I think we ought to have Morgan. We got big news coming in the near future about Morgan mm-hmm. Hale, too. I'm not going to talk about it. Could involve a job or me being the master of ceremonies. But it could involve something totally different. <laughs> <laughs> we <have> no <laughs> now to you, Jackson. This is going to be one of our most listened it's to. Good. No, it's fun. We had uh, Kevin Sprecher and oh, yeah. Highfield. For, yeah, Ian, yeah. What, we have eight kids in town? Nine. 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 Rotated them through three groups. Mm-hmm. 2.0, Coop and Hack were on course doing situational short game stuff. Yep. Hit, and how to hit shots. Mm-hmm. Spreck and Highfield were doing practice. How to practice. Yeah, we did full swing with a couple putting stations. And uh, some fitness. And yep, I led fitness. the fitness. Morgan did the instruction. <laughs> Coop, what's the topic today? The topic is listening and acknowledging and using the tips you're given. Instead of? 
throwing them in the garbage. <laughs> Frustrating today. Frustrating. Satisfaction every other time. Today, I learned what the ins and outs of teaching and instructing is. Is when a, you give your information that's not paid attention to and literally neglected. And I saw it on the course. It's the only reason. They did some things today that they shouldn't have, and they knew it when they were doing it. Mm. And I'm glad it didn't work out for them. <laughs> on a personal level, but on, for me, you know, I'm new to this. I want my teaching to be good. But I just, and maybe they were a little eager, and I think the close age groups got them a little competitive in a sense to where they weren't a group, mm. which is understandable. But just want to say great kids just didn't listen well today. <laughs> and it showed up in play. Mm -hmm. And it will continue to. Mm -hmm. So, T-Ball. It's <laughs> J-Ball. Oh, and they got this one time when I spoke up, just doing what Tony told me to do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's what I got. But the thing is, he was. He was. But, like, how often do you actually see that? Probably more often than not. Right. Well, I mean, I, we're going to get to Guthrie here in a bit because I'm going to ask him if he thinks tour players are any better than the juniors. Oh, man. We might be the worst bunch. We're, That's honest. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. and I think, and I'm going to pose this question to everybody, but I think when you go on the golf course, even if you know you're supposed to be doing something and work on something, you'd rather be comfortable. And I think that so then you just you, you take those to kids and they're playing with other kids that they want to impress or they're tr and they're trying to impress us as coaches certainly. And so you have to understand and we're and they're playing for that gift card, you know, mm -hmm. and whatever. And so, like I think they try to go and be comfortable and do what they did. I think, and then you fast forward that to tour players and. Obviously, I've done this a while and <clears throat> watched you a bunch of times in tournaments and, and a bunch of guys. And and I would say that the majority of the time you gravitate back towards being comfortable. With, with Without knowledge and with knowledge. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think it's I, a, and I don't think it's an intentional thing. I don't think, you know, it's just what we do. It's what we do. Right. But I got to give you credit. I saw you, what was it, maybe four or five, six weeks ago. Yeah. Came down here, you were playing the Monday. Jackson's better, right? And you left, and I remember calling Jackson, and I I said, you're not going to believe who came out, right? And he was like, who? I said, 2.0. And, and I said, you know, I said, I told him what we did. And I was like, it was pure when you did it. We worked on hinging the club more up. Not and your hands not going out. And I think out, yeah. for people that are listening, you know, they get into the techie stuff. Like a lot of people try to make the club go up and they push the hands out, but then the club gets behind and twist. He noticed, he noticed that was wasting his energy in a sense mm -hmm. and probably some width. Yeah, for sure. We worked on width today, but like I, anyways, fast forward that. Cause I, I know how you are when you get on your own and I was Goods back to doing what's comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievably impressed good. how good it was. I said that Jack's like, man, like that backswing was pure. Yeah. That was good. And but you told me that you've really been working on the backswing. And you yeah. got it where you want it now, so you can move forward. Yeah, it's like I feel like it's probably all tour players, but for sure me, I'm like as hard headed as we as you get. I feel like you don't get really good at something without being a little hard headed and kinda run through a wall type person and it's like man when something's not working you know you need to stick to it and it's not that you don't try to stick to it but like you're fighting for results and it's it's different when you're in the middle of the season and you're standing on the tee and you gotta hit a good shot mm -hmm. i don't care how it gets there like i'm, I'm thinking short term and so the difference hard. is between thinking long term and short term right. yeah and it's hard to think long term in the middle of the year because there's realities to things but like that's Our true. Off seasons just aren't that big right. either, and if the changes don't come into or Pretty fall quick. in, it's kind of hard. It can snowball the wrong way. Trust is hard to crutch on. Yeah. Just trust. It's it's probably it's probably very difficult with a short off season. But how much of that there isn't often. There barely. A couple of weeks. Yeah, <laughs> but like how much of that too 
is when you get there, it's, it, you think it's like a pressure thing or do you think it's being under environment or circumstance that pushes you into seeing different lines and winds with trouble out there when you kind of have to like work back to old tendencies, just yeah. like what you're talking about with your setup stuff today. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like, so set up today, I tend to get further from it and kind of bend over a little too much. Wow. And like, well, I was taught that way as a kid to be kind of pushed away. And I, so you had a I strong grip, that. I think as a kid, correct? Strong grip, so I turned you fixed hard, that, but I was far from it. And I kind of went and got the ball. Yeah. I would say. So my body's kind of trained to do that. Mm-hmm. So standing a little closer and taller, but it looks great. But send a couple hosel rockets yeah. out there right away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. High balls, <laughs> 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 dude. <laughs> you weren't nothing soft about it. You delivered the hosel. <laughs> yeah. You know, it didn't feel good. Being fortunate enough to be around golf, around some of the best like you, what I've seen is there's very little success without struggle. I mean, very little. Like, I've seen guys hit rock bottom, and then before you know it, they're on the leaderboard and they win. They win. Coop, what's the difference between when they're on the bottom like, and on the top? How big is the difference? Is it a lot? The, the difference is expectations. I mean, knowing when you step on the tee that you don't expect much out of yourself is probably a comfortable spot to be in. I wouldn't know, but is that right? Luke, I mean, oh, expectations, everything. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you, I was kind of saying earlier, I took, well, I missed second stage, and I took like three weeks off, just kind of a oh, T.O., you and I like came back to, got an invite to go play a nice golf course, and it's like, I don't know if I'm going to shoot. Went out and shot like 64, yeah. the smoothest round. It's like zero expectation. expectation. Thought I might slice it off the planet on the first hole, but it's just striped all day long. So it's if like, you were okay. taking on a new project and came to Tony and said, you know, we might have to start from scratch, but this is what I got to do. Do you have the trust and the will where you trust Tony for it to work out in the future? Like, yes, it's just like, <laughs> it's like hey, the hey, years. You got to you gotta believe that what you're doing is right. If I, I came out of college playing really good, and like I feel like I really sucked when I got to college. Or like I was really good. I came in, I had some issues. And I had to work through them until I didn't really see, really start playing well until junior year. And it was all these. Really? Yeah. So I didn't win until junior year. I started showing promise as far as like hitting the ball sophomore year. And what was, was like, your first win in college? Uh, I would have been a fall. My junior year was like Jack Nicholas invite. It was Scioto. Scioto. Hard golf course. Hard golf yeah. course. I was playing legit. Yeah, won proud. seven times the last two years. So it like clicked. Yeah. But there were so many moments leading up to that of just not being able to do the move and what I was trying to change, then being able to do it on range, then doing it for three holes and qualifying that. So what's your mindset when you're struggling like that? Just that it's going to work? That it's going to work and you just got to put the work in. You doing just the right see, thing. start seeing those glimmers like, oh, that was it. And then you start doing it and then you have a shot that has to happen or whether it's uncomfortable, wind off the left, water left, whatever it is, and you don't do it, but you're doing it on the range and it's just all these moments start piling up. <clears throat> And then you're this confident player. I came out of college, like, polished and confident. Right. And it's like, but it was kind of a three-year process of getting to there. And I mm-hmm. think that's the hardest part is... It's getting that time. It's getting... How do you do that in, like, maybe three months in an off-season? Well, and it's, that, as know. a coach, right. I right. can tell you that the toughest and the hardest job and the one I hate the most is the player that every every day it's based on how they hit it that day and they want you to tell them something different to fix the last ball. Like, it's not a big picture. Was I a little like that? Was I a little like that? Not the worst. Not, not the worst. worst. Not the worst. Not the worst. So that's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I read. You know, I, I, I work. I work. I work, I work with a lady professional, and like, but it's it, it's like you can't. You know, like, well, I I want. I need something different every day. Whatever. Like that's. But that's not how people get better. I mean, that's and, band-aids. right. That's band aids. It's never going to work. And I I really don't want to be involved in a with a player and in a situation 
where we're not working towards something. I don't want it. I don't want to be judged every day, right. like oh, you got to come up with some new shit every day. I mean, let's face it. Some days I'm not very good too, right? You know, like yeah. you you got to have a big picture and you got to have. And, and you for sure were. I mean, you what you said five minutes ago though about in the season and the immediate ramifications of Noah and you got a wife, you got a kid now too, or like, and you got to make a cut and you're trying to like, like a hundred percent that off. I mean, right. But you did, you never were like, you didn't never go, you didn't ever go out. We work one day and the next day you call me and you'd be like, or text me and be like, so I tried this today and it'd be something totally a hundred percent. Ass in golf turn into infected wounds. Wow, Coop. They do. <laughs> Whoa. There's no band <laughs> if you play professional Drop golf. No band. You Write that to. down. That's the title of this podcast. <laughs> I'm just being honest. You have to. You can't fake it against guys like this. You cannot fake it. You got to be good. A situation will show up. You'll get exposed. Right, it'll it'll expose we got to get Morgan in this. Yeah, you just can't band aid. A golf swing, you might be able to for an hour, but in an hour and two minutes it's going to show up. It will show back up. I think that what Tony does is puts what he teaches in Morgan. The guys trust you. They trust you and know that it's a plan. Well, I think I think the guys I've had the most success with and had really good years with, you know, I look at the people that I had, like I had, would say your best years, right? Right. And you could look. I'm sure you've got that caddy in, right? You say, hey, these years is what we're like. Luke, like Lucas in 2019, tour championship, I thought. Great, but, like, I thought, man, like, everybody was all in. And, like, for sure he believed what we were and doing, right? we got 100% dedication out of Right. And I thought Smiley, man, I'm so bad with years. But the year he won in Vegas and, you know, was in the final group at the Masters, man. Like, I've, I've told lots of people this. Like, it would, it was, it'd be hard to find a person that was a better student at that point, right? right? Like, he'd drive to see you, yep. and you guys would, we would work, and man, like, he was, he was and he was on the same shit all the time. And then the other one I would bring up when it comes to that would be like Robbie Shelton. When he was in college, he was the best student I'd ever had. Like. I, you could see him once, and you could see him two and a half months later, and you'd say, what are you working on? And it would be word for word exactly what he's doing. And I think that's why he was such a great college player, and he's obviously a great player. But that's why I think he had so much success. I would say he's veered off that a little bit as a professional, but I think that's pretty easy to do out there. I mean, I think that's busy, busy right? Yeah. How hard is it to stay? How hard is it when you're playing, when you start to play shitty, to not start having rabbit ears and listen to everybody. Oh, you see. And then we got to ask Coop, what's the worst shit you've heard on a range from a teacher? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to give names. It's me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think about that one. <laughs> Let's give you a little time. Was I there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you were not. <laughs> I, I, I think the hardest thing is when you start struggling a little bit is you compare your, it's the best players in the world. So if I, if you're struggling with your putting, you're struggling with your short game, long game, it's not like you go to the guy that struggles in a hundredth on tour in that category. You go next to the guy that's best at it. And so you're kind of like looking at him. Wow. I suck at this. I remember being on a range at colonial and this one, I was playing really good. And I was not a great long iron player, not a great three wood player. Hitting next to Adam Scott. And how like, many I'm long saying, irons you got to hit at Colonial? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and like, well, see, but, but I'm like, and I, I made some like borderline changes trying to get better, right? Yep. Based on how shallow he was, and just every three wood was so flush, and I was a pretty steep player, and I hit these spinny three woods. They weren't very Colonial good. Was not a place for you. Never will be when it's firm. Yeah. It's so, tough. but like, <laughs> really I, is. I didn't go. I went to probably the best player doing that. I've seen a, I've seen steep players at Colonial. Yeah. You know, struggle. Yeah. And it's I think it's the the contact. Mm -hmm. The club bounces a little bit. Yeah. Uh, because I did not. I would love that long. course, but I never like right. never play that well. It's not my fault. Okay. 
Okay. Go ahead, Coop. Worst advice you've heard given to a player on the range by a teacher at a tour event. How'd that feel? Good. Look good. Trust it. That made no sense to me. <laughs> he answered his own question. Basically. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, it just was bizarre to me. And I, I heard it. And how'd that feel? Good. You want to look good? Just trust that. What? Trust what? <laughs> I didn't understand. We didn't talk about it. Did not understand. I'm using that next time. <laughs> I, you, we watch Guthrie hit ball strong. How'd that feel? Look good? Trust it. Trust it. What look good, feel good? Trust it. It, it looked good. <laughs> it felt good. It looked good. We'll trust it. You know, what did I do? <laughs> you got to know what you're doing. But today, the way you explained to me what you were doing made me understand that, you know, it's time. It's a process. Yeah, it's, something, it's something starting to build, build. like... It feels like we were work, working on this backswing, committed to it, and there's things I want to work on in my downswing, but it's step one. And until this backswing's kind of stamped yeah, in place, yeah. we shouldn't even move on. So it feels – I also don't have any status right now. So right. there's not so a tournament yeah. next week that I'm kind of desperate to, like, get feeling mm -hmm. really good and feeling like I can win. So I feel like I got the time to build this thing. Right. Build it correct. It's like being a red shirt freshman. Yeah, you know, in a sense, you got time to get better. So, yeah. yeah. So, I think it's interesting. Like where I'm going is the art of coaching behind this, mm -hmm. right? And obviously, figuring it out for each player. But the time aspect is very different for each person, right? And like if you're working with a guy, so literally, I, this is a text from today at 4:21 from a member at Atlantic Beach. Mm -hmm. Small breakthrough, whatever. Shot 91 yesterday. Went back on the range. Watched some of our videos. Remember what you'd said, that good players stick with what they're working on. Just played nine with Amy. Shot a 37 with a double. You got to do better coaching on that whole thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Could have been 35. But, like. <laughs> his cat. <laughs> but, like, this guy had. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have your wife as your right. cat. <laughs> exactly. Ooh, that'd be torture. You've done that. Have you? I have done that. How was well, that? Yeah, we did good. A full year. Yeah, but you guys are different than most couples. I know. We're I mean, adorable, Jackson, aren't we? too. I mean, they're different. I gave her she veto power. She didn't want any, any piece of anything. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> She called me off one shot. I told her, like, hey, if I ever, <laughs> I ever, yeah. But Caitlin was, like, was a good I'm player. A, yeah, she was a college player. Yeah. One player. And I was like, I'm going to talk okay. out loud. She's like, I don't want to get your yardage. I'm like, okay, I'll get them. I'm going to talk out loud through my shot. If I say something that sounds really stupid and I look committed, please stop me. Right. She stopped me one time. I, like, had a bad yardage, and I just, like, made up a number in my head, and I was about to sail it over the green. And she's like, no, that ain't right. You said this, like, it's not that number. And I was like. Wow, you're right. I was better to hit like an eight iron clear over the green. You're paying attention. Yeah. Wow. So. Impressive. Mm. Way to go, Whitey. Yeah. <laughs> All over it. All right. So for coaching T, mm -hmm. how do you rein people back in? Because you're you're very good at that. He never teaches the same thing. Whoever comes in there, it's always. I mean, I have seen guys go to the one way. thing. You know, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. I don't care if you're an octopus and have eight arms. You do this. Well, what am I going to do with the other six arms? You know, I'm not like the squid over there. You know, it's like he teaches individual their swing, mm -hmm. takes advantage of what they can do well, and tries to pull out what they don't do well. It's fun watching him. Rain, like when people, I'm here, people. When people do get sidetracked, getting them back in. <laughs> So, how do you do that? Do what? How do you rein people back in? Because you're good at it. I mean, I just think, uh, okay, so on the PGA Tour level, I think, and I'm going to give the man across the table some, like, when you have a real good relationship with a caddy, it makes it a huge, because, like, they don't really ever, I've, I've had players go off the rails in a practice session with no caddy, like, well, you're not at a tournament. But it isn't as, like, it's not as tense, Right. right. But, like, most of the time that happens, it's at a tournament with something going on, right? Like, 
if you have a really good caddy, and I've been around some really good ones, I think like obviously, I mean, it's the reason he's sitting here. Coop's one of my favorite human beings and caddies and whatever. And I just think the world of him and we worked great together. It's like, I, I always felt like I could read him and he could read me. And like, I could always just like, sometimes he'd just give me this look like, (laughs) and I knew I needed to say something. And there were times I could give him a look and I swear to God, he'd be like, Oh, I lost a golf ball with him. (laughs) Like it'd be some (laughs) shit like that. Or he'd go, you know, Oh, Tiffany just, you know, whatever. I like, right. Like we just kind of knew. And so, but been around a bunch of them. I mean, Smiley, you know, Smiley had some, great ones john yarborough right right? like he was great guy and and aaron aaron his first caddy right that got one hadn't Mm caddy but like man like in a and what did i'm on the corn ferry and all that aaron handled some really good situations yeah man like him winning and everything happened so fast like so i think i always called him buffalo looper he was from buffalo and he was a big sports guy but anyways like a great k like buffalo looper and i had a great rapport for a while, like where you know, he could tell me things. I could tell him things. So I think, I think, man, on the tour level, you know, I think that's a big. I think that's a big deal. Because you get an honest answer from him. right, and you know, most pros are just they're so humble, and you know, they really are. They're gonna tell you, you know, I just suck or something like that. And if you tell yourself that you suck. Well, the tour player always, to me, always goes the like. It's like I just hit it bad, or I just had made a bad swing there. And the caddy will be like, "Well, I mean, he didn't hit the best shot, but it was blowing twenty left to right, and it was this, and he did get, a, you know, or whatever, right? Like, it, or, you know, a true picture, right? You know, I think so. That's what I think. Like but, today with the kids, we were they hit a shot and they would be like just so upset and I'm like what are you upset about now and they would go I oh, pulled it or blah 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 and it's like you're within tour average and you're 12 <laughs> <laughs> and you're pissed off I love it but easy you know it's golf is harder than you think and we gave them situations that weren't easy you know it was difficult situations and they would you're hit it a 50 yard bunker shot I threw a like, 50 yard almost like plug degree. Front pin with all cover on their asses. <laughs> I did. I was aggravated. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had plug bunker shots, 50 yard bunker shots. <laughs> <laughs> we had downhill. <laughs> Bird's nest lies in the rough. I'm just like, good grief. <laughs> I'm barely hitting the green from these places. I feel it in the morning. You get to go out for a little bit. We're going straight to the fairway bunker. Oh. Give them a good lesson. Oh. <laughs> this is only, I'm teaching Tony's teaching. Mm. I'm just carrying uh-huh. on. The gleam in your eyes right now. You look <laughs> excited. You know how many times, you know how many times as a caddy, Coop has told me on Tuesday, going into the Wednesday practice round, hey, 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 yeah. We need to hit some fairway bunker shots. <laughs> we hadn't hit a fairway bunker shot. I'll Perfectly be. Off a downhill line. <laughs> I mean, there's, I think there's things. I think there are things that are done in the bunker that. If Lucas is listening to this, he's going to so know it's about it. Well, hey, he he got better, <laughs> and it wasn't because of me. It was just because of him. You know, practicing. That's hard to make yourself go do something. That's hard. Let's I mean, go hit some yeah. fairway bunkers. You know, I have simple thoughts. I'm a simple man. But if you <laughs> dig your feet down two inches in dirt and do not choke up on the club and you hit it fat, don't say, why did I hit it fat? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's pretty simple. Choke up on the club and take one more, maybe. <laughs> you just change who you were. <laughs> Shorter now. <laughs> I'm gonna get two sets. I need two fittings of clubs. Bumper clubs and Because I like to hold it with the butt of the grip in my palm. <laughs> 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 I don't dig in. 
<laughs> That's just my thought. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, choke up when you get in the office just a little bit. Oh, that's so much waste. <laughs> <laughs> so much waste. You got to let Jackson take it. Okay. Sorry, my tooth. Look, <laughs> we're getting close to the end of this one. We could wrap this up and start another one. What about for your average Joe or your junior? <laughs> right. How do you rein him in? What's the first thing that you do? Choke up. I told him to choke up. What's the first thing? Like, how do you figure out the first thing you're going to say to someone? Can I answer my own question? I think I think what I've learned from T is you have to cur like hear them, like talk about what they're trying to do or feeling, and help them paint the picture. Like you, you don't give them the picture because then they, they can't see it. correct because then they can't buy into it when they go into the range or they're doing it on their own on the golf course. Like, I need. I'm best if I not that I think it's my idea, but like it's like. I need oh, to have owner. Better when you think it's your idea. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Did you get that on camera? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm guilty. Oh man, but no, like you need to. For me, in the biggest moment, if I'm on the 72nd hole, I'm at Pebble, and I want to cut one off the ocean. I want to know it's coming back. I need to freaking own that thing and like believe what we're talking about, and like really understand it. And it might come back to that moment where. It comes out of your mouth what you're trying to do, and it's like validation of everything. Can we hear from Morgan? Like, what is your first? So you get an amateur that's just an average player. Like, it seems to me like the first thing you say can either make them leave or kind of last them. Let's give Coop the MVP for this podcast. <laughs> He's asking a serious question. Like, I wouldn't know what to open up with. It'd probably be like, yeah, you're pretty good. There's something wrong. <laughs> you could just say, yeah, you're pretty. <laughs> you <could just> <laughs> <laughs> that might scare them off, too, though. I know. I mean, I think it goes back to, you know, learning under T and, you know, some of the teachers he's put me around and, you know, just. Trusting what you do. Trusting what I do, but getting to know the player as right. an individual. Right. And, you know, what they are thinking, what they're trying to do in the swing, you know. Their so goals. the decision of your, is pretty much based on studying the student. Yes, you know, I think you spend a, you know right. the first few minutes of each yeah. lesson. I mean, I do talking to them and, and asking I, questions. If you didn't, you wouldn't be doing your job. Right. You and I think every teacher's personality is different, and the things that they can say or they could get away with or that they could do, like things I say, like Mark Blackburn might would never say or right. get away right, and like things that. The, no, really? <laughs> shocker. <laughs> but like things that got quiet. Things that things or but like or things JP Justin Parsons or things that yeah. Dana Dahlquist or whatever yeah. would say, like you know, everybody's different, right? So I think you gotta figure out what's in the what's in your per, you know, like what your personality is. It's gotta fit like, you know. <clears throat> I mean I don't know if y'all know, but like normally when things start to go astray, I turn the attention away from golf and I talk mm -hmm. slower and I do, I act slower. I normally control the golf ball coming to you. Like I always have to pull it out of my pocket. Right. Right. Instead of it just being there, like everything to slow, <clears throat> to slow the situation down. And I'll, you know, I'll normally like lucky enough, I can crack a little bit of a joke <laughs> and like, I'll, you know, I'll make a joke. I'll be, I, I normally am self deprecating. I'll say something, you know, whatever like that, that takes the attention away from them and slows them down. I can, I can attest to that. I can think back to when I get fiery and <laughs> in sessions sometimes I could be the guy you're referencing that had a fiery, <laughs> not at a golf tournament, Maybe. but yeah. no, but I can like, now thinking back, I've never thought of it, but like, you'll like kind of stand over the golf ball or something and kind of like slowly set up another one when I'm like a little frustrated and you're probably vibing it or kind of move a training aid or something. And I would almost, I'd never say anything, but I'm kind of thinking get out of the dang way. I want to hit the shot, but I don't say it. And by the time, like three more seconds pass, you're calm. 
<laughs> Let's go back to Morgan. I just like her voice. <laughs> My gosh. I mean, she's the voice of the Dew Sweepers. Oh, she's kind of, oh. And the logo. And the yeah. logo. As a matter of fact, she's almost everything. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I mean, we got big plans for her. Hey, she's going to do good things. We're pumped. We're pumped. Kudos to Morgan, too. I mean, been doing a heck of a job. So, Thank Jackson. You feel great. Tell you what, we've had a big time this session. Let's do another one. All right, we're going to do another one. So, let's give them some more. So, all right, we uh, appreciate everybody listening, but stay tuned for episode two. Episode part two. Part two of what was the. Let's do it in 3D. Part two in 3D. There you go. Band-Aids what? Band-Aids make infected wounds. Band-Aids make infected wounds. Part two. I just want to remind everybody something that I forgot. Recently, a couple weeks ago, my wife and I went out. We went to a wedding, and afterwards, with some friends, we were like, hey, where's a great place to go? I'll be honest, like... In my travels and day-to-day, sometimes I get caught up and I forget some of the great places right around the corner. But i got to remind you about the Ice Box Bar on 755 Monroe Street. I was blown away by just the whole vibe, the atmosphere, and with the Velvet Pig, the food in the back room, and the big screen TVs up front. We sat there and watched some playoff games. I was blown away by the atmosphere, the vibe, and just how cool it was to have the Ice Box Bar right here near the Dew Sweepers downtown, near where I live. If you're looking for a great place to go sit, watch some games, hang out, play some pool, you got to go to the Icebox Bar right there on Monroe Street. There's a good chance you'll see all of us hanging out. But do yourself a favor, go visit the Icebox. It's one of the best places out there. Hi, this is Tony Ruggiero. And look, recently, several teachers I know and several players have had some scares with skin cancer. In fact, I recently went and saw a dermatologist here in town, and I had a couple things frozen off, eyelid, my face, my earlobe, and not getting any younger. And I know I know it's getting to that time of the season where it's cooler, but look, being in the sun is a real deal, and I've not been very good, to be totally honest, my whole career at using it at all because I didn't like how greasy it was, how hard it was to get off your hands, how it clogged up my pores. And then I found this sunscreen, Visor Skin Care. It's clear. It goes on. It doesn't dry you out. It isn't greasy. It's like you didn't put anything on. By far, it's the best sunscreen I've ever used. Without a doubt, is the easiest to use. And we've got a discount code for all of you. All you have to do is go to visorskincare.com. Is use our code word, Dewsweeper. Visorskincare.com, code word, Dewsweeper. 